Alright guys, with the recent reveal of the cassette piece release date, that being April 26th, I wanted to sort of go over what we know about the game thus far as a means to sort of dispel the idea that the game is just another Pokemon-like title because, trust me, it's not. We won't be deep diving into any of the intricacies of any of the given systems just yet since I've already sort of made a blueprint for the type of content I want to make for the game post-launch, but I just want to go over some of the basic concepts that will exist, how they sort of work, and how they differ from your typical Pokemon-like experience. That being said, don't forget to subscribe for daily monster taming content and to stay up to date on cassette beasts, and let's dive in. Okay, so we're going to be moving pretty quickly here, but first of all, let's talk about the combat. Cassette Beast features two-on-two turn-based battles, and while you might think that's just a simple emulation of the double battle mechanic from Pokemon, that couldn't be further from the truth. The various cassettes that you can transform into have completely customizable stickers that can be attached and utilized as moves or passive effects. Furthermore, the game features an AP system, which, while you might argue we've seen that with stuff like Coromon and Temtem, and even Nexomon, the way this system works actually has you start with no AP and you gain it over time, so you have to make a choice between stocking up on it to unleash more powerful moves, or just using weaker moves early on in order to get a damage lead. The game also features a very unique type chart with types such as glass, plastic, etc, and these types interact with each other in a way that we haven't really seen before in any monster taming RPG that at least I can think of. There are three types of interactions that can occur and these go both ways. You can use something that is advantageous against another beast, causing it to get a debuff. You could use something that's disadvantageous against another enemy that would cause them to get a buff or you could use something that causes a transmutation for example using a fire attack on a plastic type would burn that plastic turning it into a toxic type this is definitely a system that will require a lot more attention than your typical type strength and weakness situation since there's a broader tactical aspect to switching into certain attacks to get buffs or to transmutate your cassettes or attacking your own teammates, etc. Each monster in the game is also monotyped, and while you might think that falls into the same category as Nexomon and Coromon, which I feel that the monotyped aspect in those games can kind of limit them a little bit, Cassette Beast features in-battle fusion, which allows for over 14,000 fusion combinations due to the algorithm which they use, allowing you to fuse any two monsters together. These fusion forms have various advantages and disadvantages, one advantage being that you become dual-typed, you also become a more powerful monster, however the disadvantage is now you can only attack once per turn instead of twice and you lose the ability to attack your own partners in order to create buffs and transmutations and stuff like that. Outside of battle there's also many key differences such as the most obvious being the open world that allows for more unique map traversal via the ability to glide and other special overworld techniques that you can learn that are a lot more rewarding than the simple HM mechanic. Uh, this allows for the world itself to feel very full and it can have puzzles that are sort of only accessible by backtracking and stuff like that. It's what you'd expect with something that's open world. You'll also be teamed up with various human companions that you can perform various bonding activities with in order to power up your fusions and gain other bonuses. There's even an optional dating function too. You and your companion characters actually transform into the monsters rather than that being something you necessarily collect and tame. You do have to record monster data so you can transform so you still have that collection aspect there but it is a little bit different. This means that the bonds in the game are going to be more human based rather than human and monster based. Finally, the game does have its own version of what you'd consider a shiny system, and before you say that's copying Pokemon, I'm pretty sure altered color and enemies in RPGs have been a thing for a long time, even if Pokemon did sort of popularize the mechanic. Uh, Cassette Beast is really unique in that the bootleg forms actually come with their own unique types and randomized moves, meaning that the bootleg you find will be completely unique. They'll also come with more rare moves because the stickers, like I mentioned earlier, have their own rarities as well. But yeah guys, that's a very basic gist of what we know about Cassette Beast so far, at least in terms of how it relates to the Pokemon-centric comparisons that a lot of people like to bring up. This game will of course have its own unique bosses, dubbed the Archangels, there's also vampires for whatever reason, but other than that, today's video is more so just to give you guys an idea on the basic aspects of Cassette Beasts and what you should sort of know going into it. Also quickly just wanted to say, being a Pokemon-like title is not a bad thing and I'm not trying to use this video as a way to say Pokemon's bad and Cassette Beast is good, but rather that Cassette Beast does its own thing. This isn't invalidating Nexomon or Coromon or Temtem or anything like that. I think those games have their place, but I don't like this 
misappropriation of the Pokemon-like label, or in more derogative terms, Pokemon clone, Pokemon knockoff, Pokemon ripoff label, thrown at Cassette Beast when it's completely unjustified. But yeah, all that being said, if you do want to stay up to date on Cassette Beast and want to get a bunch of guides and Let's Plays and stuff like that when it comes out, definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel. I come out with daily videos. You can also check out my Twitter, Discord, and Patreon linked below. Special thanks to the patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Drogue Ghost, Dark Persona, Exodus, and Candy Maruncy, and we'll see you next time. Peace.